start at um, 8.30 and I'm done at 8.30. I'm going to start really long with this. So I, I apologize for that. So when I posted this Friday, it was the last week, as I recall, I posted, I took off, didn't even notice there's a problem. And if anybody's emailed me about it, I can't listen. Um, Friday, my internet service went down completely. And I have no internet access on it for the entire weekend. And we'll play with that. You're probably going to get it. Yeah, yeah, that's my brain. <laughs> I sent one, one, for for <laughs> yeah, every, one for everybody enrolled in the class. Okay. Take attendance that way. Yes. <laughs> so See, guys, you... how was the second class? Oh, by the way, who did the first one? Yes, that's, that's exactly what I got. So what's the, what, I'm trying to remember, the angle is 60, right? 100 yeah. no. Cosine 60, one half, no? Trying to remember what, 180 divided by 3 is. Yeah, it's 60, it's cosine 60, it's 60. I just, it's one half. I just did it. One half. Still disagreeing. It was a question for which you guys were supposed to write down the, write down the answer, if I type it correctly. I was expecting just to give you the answer. Why did I write it? It's one. Because there's a unit that you get 19, one cosine between them. It's cosine degrees. Five. I heard the goal. Well, you have 60, right? Thank you. So moving this one over here, what's the angle in between? Oh, What's the close on I must pay attention to the way they were pointing. What's the close on 20? Negative. Negative one half. Thank you. Didn't pay attention to which way they were pointing. I know. That was the whole point behind the question. It was a good question, wasn't it? Yeah. Too bad I goofed it all up. That was the second question. Easy. Good. I had to visit. 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 I had to like so, See, like, that, it, it's all bookkeeping, isn't it? So you just set set them to generic uh, um, variables. So you have like u equals x1, y1, c1, yes. and then you just solve for both sides of the equation and say that they're equal to one another. If they are, we said solve both sides of the equation. You need to evaluate. Evaluate both. And sides. Just make sure you, you write it in a nice continuous manner, like you did back in trigonometry. I. Uh, I did both sides of the equation, but I, I put like a since and a therefore at the end, so I can... Is that a smooth point from one side to the other? Yes. Well, well yeah, they, it makes, they're both equal to one another. Yes, that's yeah. They can meet in the middle, right? Like of course. Side, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a, a, a lot of times, if you want to verify mathematical statements, we typically do that. We'll start with one side and massage it and then give up. Go to the other side and just come backwards and bridge the gap. Absolutely. Again, just like when you verify trigonometric identities back in math age. Yeah. I like that. Massage it and just give up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to confess. When you massage or simplify something, that's easy. But it takes something simplify to now make it more complex. Like to the other side, it's difficult. That's why I maintain often in math We just like that simplify is easier to go in that direction. It takes more thinking to determine how you're going to make something more, look more nasty. Guys, when I come to class, um, I, I tend to know what the topic is, and I just I just talk because I know the topics. And I sent you guys to do some homework, and I got to confess, um, there's something I missed, and I, I really feel bad about it for this weekend. But this is a topic I didn't mention for you guys, which is kind of important. And it, it's important because. If I take a vector like um, v bar, and I've got another vector, call it, uh, call it u bar. Often, 
in, in mathematics, I like to discuss the projection of one vector onto the other. In this particular picture, I'm going to project u bar onto v bar. Can I make v bar a little bit longer? I'm nervous because I think this example might too be too simplistic. OK, that's better. I've got a nice long v bar. And I would like to talk about a scalar projection of u bar onto v bar, which is created in the following fashion, visually speaking. I'm going to plant my feet at the tip of my vector u bar. I am perpendicularly going to meet v bar. And the length of the line segment I'm shading in blue. I'm being careful as a mathematician, everybody. I'm saying the length of the line segment. I've got two endpoints. That length is what I want to refer to as a scalar projection of u bar on the v bar. The notation I use is a notation. So the scalar projection of u bar onto v bar. Let's see if you and I can't compute it. Allow this to be the angle in between those two vectors. If I plant my feet right here at this vertex of an angle, would you guys not agree that when it comes to the sign of that angle theta, is it actually, I think I just misspoke everybody. Okay, can I look at the cosine instead? If I look at the cosine of the angle theta, I think it's merely a ratio of the length of side adjacent to theta. Oh, that's the scene up here. Divided by the length of the hypotenuse of that triangle, but the length of the hypotenuse of that triangle is nothing more than the magnitude of d bar. That being the case, I think the scalar projection of u bar onto v bar could be interpreted as nothing more than the cosine of theta times the magnitude of v bar. Oh, shoot, you guys. Look how nice that looks. It's so close, it's so close to being um, 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 the dot product. The dot product. <laughs> close to being correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering where the magnitude of the U are. Yeah. Is that what he's saying? It's not correct. Actually, I didn't catch that. That really was my mistake. I didn't see it. Remember I said out loud in English? I said cosine of theta is ratio of length of the adjacent side to the length of hypotenuse. It's just like brought the wrong vector. The length, the length I had thought of is actually the magnitude of you all. My you apologies. I wasn't <coughs> it. Oh, but you guys, shoot, I'm pounding my fist on my table. That's so close to being a dot product. Let's force the issue. I think I can force the issue just by taking this beast and multiplying it by the magnitude of the bond. Yeah, doesn't it be cosine? Both sides have to be multiplied by the bar? Oh, good. Another mistake. But this was intentional. I put the magnitude of v bar in there because I wanted it. But technically speaking, to make it legal, I better put it in down here. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Everybody? Mm -hmm. uh, that being the case, if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to rewrite. From now on, I can interpret the scalar projection of v bar onto v bar as being nothing more than a ratio of the dot product between u bar and v bar to the magnitude of v bar. By the way, it's just a number. It's a scalar. After all, the dot product upstairs is scalar, and downstairs the length of the vector is also scalar. Oh, you know what, you guys? I don't want to do this, darn it. Um, can I change this a little bit? With my blue pen, can I now consider the vector in the same direction as v bar, whose magnitude is the scalar projection of v bar onto v bar? And if I want to come up with that vector, it's this easy. I think the vector projection of u bar on the v bar is simply a vector going in the same direction as v bar, whose magnitude is what the, you see as length in blue. Well, check this out. I want a yes or no answer. Um, is this a vector in the same direction as v bar? What's its length? One. I think it's the corresponding unit vector going in the same direction as v bar. But now to force it to have a, a magnitude the same as the scalar projection of u bar onto v bar, I'll simply multiply by the dot product of these two over the magnitude of v bar. That being the case, from now on, if you want to consider a vector projection of u bar onto v bar, we can interpret it slightly differently. I, I will just think of it as a ratio of this dot product. to the magnitude of v bar twice. Oh shoot, I can't. This is a scalar. Um, I forgot a factor. And the factor is nothing more than this vector. So the projection 
is indeed another vector, not a scalar. Because I think, I'm not sure, but I think your author might not write it this way. As I recall, I think he wrote the denominator as v bar dotted with v bar. Mm -hmm. Me, same thing though, right? You choose whatever form you prefer. Yes. Did you uh, happen to go over normal vectors last time? As opposed to like no. abnormal vectors? Or anti No, vectors? well, there's a. <laughs> There's a portion of this uh, chapter that says normal vectors, find a vector normal to the given vectors, and then they give you two vectors, and you're supposed to find the vector Show normal me. to those. Right there. Sorry. And I just, yeah, I just had no idea how to solve that. I haven't taken physics. Yeah. If I got two vectors, what's a normal vector? 90 degrees. Off of which oh, one? Um, off of both, wouldn't it be? Normal yeah. to both of them would be 90 degrees off of both, and then anti-normal would be neg negative 90 off of both, right? Yes. And so I, I think all the also is really asking you to do it. Yes. Just look at a cross product. Find, okay. find the orthogonal vector. I looked at the oh, really? I looked at the cross products for, for those two vectors, and, and it wasn't right. You guys, the reason I'm stalling, I don't, I don't use that word normal. In that case, I usually talk about a vector's normal to a plane or a surface in three space. That's why I want to see what, what homework, um, what the homework question was. To me, if I got two vectors like this, and I want to find a third one orthogonal to these two, I just use the word orthogonal. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will typically use the word normal, which I know has the same context. But I, if I had a surface here, and I've got a tangent plane to the surface at a given point, and then I might want to look at a normal vector. Mm -hmm. You and I will be looking at normal vectors, plenty of them, I think, this week. Okay. Because I need to discuss them. I'm just surprised the author. So vectors. it's just orthogonal. That's yes. all that that means. Treat it as such. Okay. It's just that I, like I said, I typically think of using that word normal when I've got some kind of surface or plane in okay. space, as opposed to two vectors. Okay. When we act, when I ask for an orthogonal, isn't that just a cross product? Is like cross product, and then it goes out 90 degrees. That's the new vector created mm -hmm. by the cross product. So. Well, but can we put the words together? I think if you look at a cross product, you do get a vector orthogonal to the first two. Yeah. But what if I asked you for a vector that's some um, orthogonal to these two? How do you generate it? You look at the cross product if you want. Or look at any vector that's going in the same direction as a cross product. You get my point. You get yeah. many answers. Oh, okay. So if you took the cross product and multiplied by 17 because you wanted to, then we'll still get it. You still get it, but it just be bigger than so it's just a cross product multiplied by any scalar? Yes, I agree. I'm being silly about the scalar, because you don't have to. I'm just saying if you did, you'd still get another vector for follow up. All right. Two. You guys, can I show you something neat about this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. Um, I'm pulling out my green pen. So I want you to consider this vector right here. Oh shoot, you already did. We call it the V bar. Now what I want you to do is take U bar and back off by the projection. Don't you think the difference is going to be this one? I'll call it W bar. Isn't that U bar minus a projection vector? Now if I take this green W bar and slide it over and place it right here, what's interesting about W bar? What's interesting about it? It's 90 degrees. Yeah, it meets the other vector v bar at a right angle. They're orthogonal. And so if you and I have some kind of mathematical system in which every single one of my mathematical entities is being generated by two members of my set, like for example, take u bar and v bar. Don't those span all two space? Any vector in two space can be expressed as a linear combination of u bar and v bar. But if you wanted to force orthogonality with your base vectors, then maybe taking one and subtracting off the projection of it onto the other will create a whole new mathematical system. You can span all vectors in two space again, but with two seeds that are meeting each other at a right angle. And in some applications, particularly physics, is important to force, force that orthogonality with your set of vectors. There's a couple people in this room who's taken Math 33. You've already seen this. You would refer to this as a, as a Graham Schmidt procedure for manipulating your first vector. And by the way, it doesn't have to, have to do with two space. It could be in any dimensional space. And the 
vectors might not look like this. They could be integrals. They could be a variety of things, matrices. This is the so quants. Does 33 use the same book? Oh, no. It's a whole separate book. <laughs> But you know, there aren't that many institutions um, that actually combine linear algebra and differential equations. And so there aren't, there aren't that many books. But I, I, I really have reviewed all the ones that are out there that do combine linear algebra and PD, and it's, it's the best one that I found out there. So it's a decent book. How many units is the class normally if we were to go to a four year? I mean, linear algebra and DE separately. I think they're both four. Four? Is it? Is it? Uh, is it? No. What? Yeah, no. I mean, if you were to if you were to convert them. So, Eric, okay. typical typical is three units each, three semester units. Although I have to confess, um, there are some institutions that are on the quarter system that will drag the differential equations out into two semesters, even though linear algebra is only one semester. Uh -huh. So keep that in mind. There's something else. I didn't mention a class. Um, I meant that to be a parallelogram. And if you're in the area of a parallelogram, how would you do that? You just do two times one half base times height times this one times that one. Well, I think he said two times one half times base times height, but isn't that just base times height? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're right. The area is base times height. Well, plus. Oh, but in my picture, you guys, I'm going to change things. Do you think in black I can replace that with a vector? I'll call it V bar. And I'll replace this black line segment with another vector. I'll label V bar. And let you and I talk about an angle in between. This is not a ground shattering result, you guys. This is very slight silly stuff. I just maintain that length times width could be considered the magnitude of dr times, oh shoot, I guess it's an h, isn't it? But you gotta confess, h has a nice relationship with beta. After all, if I asked you guys to take a peek at sine of theta, wouldn't that mean would merely be the ratio of the length side opposite of it in that right triangle to the length of the magnitude of the vector you bar? That's the length of the hypotenuse. Or shall I say, H alternatively can be interpreted this way. So when I pick this beast up off the board and slap it in for H, I guess I can interpret the area of such a parallelogram in this following fashion. And you guys, the only reason why I mentioned this is because if you take a peek at what I have on the ink board, it's got another name. It's merely the, um, the, um, the magnitude. magnitude of the cross product. Again, not a ground shadow result, but I talked about cross products. I just want you guys to recognize that indeed the magnitude of such a cross product could be interpreted as a corresponding area of such a parallel. Guys, I'm in trouble. I forgot what I'm supposed to discuss today. 11.5. Oh. Our take home quiz. The life stuff. <laughs> what was it, Eric? Oh, oh, you see, we forgot what we were discussing today. I said our take home quiz. That's the uh, ones that you're going to need to I didn't do it, Eric. That's my point. For shame. I know, I know. So you guys, last time, I just think I just barely mentioned lines. So let me come back. Here's my x-axis. Here's my y-axis. Here's my z-axis. Back in math B, it is indeed the case that in the Cartesian plane, that equation represents a line. It's just that in three space, it is not the case that this equation right here represents a line. I'll, I'll prove this to you in a couple days, you guys. That, that actually represents a plane. So I, I want to take, take a break today and come up with equations, lines. And I'm going to do it in a very lazy fashion. In my system, here's a line. And let's just suppose, let's suppose, I've already got one known vector. 
I'll call it, um, how about calling it R sub not long? It's just a fixed vector emanating from the origin whose term at a point somewhere in the line. And what I want to do from this vector that you see in blue is I want to generate, hold on, I'm messing up with my colors. I want to generate an arbitrary vector emanating from the origin terminating on the black line. In other words, I want a collection of vectors in red that span all of the black line when it comes to the points of the tip of those vectors. Here's an easy way to do it. In green. Sorry, I better go back in red. Can't I just give it a name? But in green, if I have a vector going in the same direction as a line, and then pick it up off the origin, and hook its initial point with the terminal point of what you see in blue. Can I give it a name so I can refer to it? I'll call it, uh, I'll call it A bar. <coughs> Don't you guys agree on my picture? Clearly, clearly, it is the case that that red vector is equal to my initial vector plus my A vector? Yes. Oh, you're right. I made a mistake. Notice how the tip of the red vector doesn't actually necessarily match up with the tip of the blue vector. So I guess what I really meant to say is this. My R bar is going to be equal to my blue vector plus my green vector times some scalar. I would like to use the letter T because if you now allow T to span over the entire collection of reals, it's acting as a parameter. And so this is one parametric representation of a line as a vector equation. As a matter of fact, to be really clear to the reader, I do this. Can I refer to this actually as a vector value function where the reader understands that t and d is the independent variable? Mm -hmm. Now I gotta confess, if my r bar looks like this, I said r bar and then r sub not r. If it looks like this, and my a bar looks like this. Then I think I can write this equation in an alternative fashion. I like this equation as one single equation in vector form, but you don't have to think of it in vector form. After all, what you see on the left is nothing more than the sum of these two vectors with TB multiplied. And so I think if you think of R bar of T as this vector right here, then check out what happens when I rewrite this equation. Rewriting this equation, I think I have the following. Is that going to be an x, y, z be equal to, gosh, what was the other one? Was it an x naught, comma, y naught, comma, z naught is what r sub naught bar was? Plus a, b, c. Plus a, b, c times c. Oh, you guys, can I restate that? How about restating it this way? This vector, the single vector right here, could be expressed as a, a, this single vector right here. However, to say that two vectors are equal to each other simply means their components are equal to each other. So, as an alternative, I've got three parametric equations. Give me the x, y, z coordinates of that line. They're simply expressible as these sums. Again, it's just a different way to express an equation by one. The upside is that these are nice, clean, linear equations. The downside, I've got three of them instead of a simple depends on which your application, which form you want to express your mind.
Is that L1? Yeah, L1. Yeah, L1 for line 1. L2. I don't know, you guys. I'm making these up out of thin air. Do you think these two lines are parallel or perpendicular, or do you think they're not even? I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm almost kind of thinking that that 10 plus or Yeah, if you set t equals 0, then yeah, their y's are the same and the z's are the same at that point. So they could be parallel, maybe? But are they? t equals 1. Maybe I went through this too fast. I was just expecting you guys to answer the question immediately. Um, in which direction? Does this line point? Look at my picture. Use color. In oh, which direction does that line point? It points in the green direction. Your A bar gives you the direction of the line. So you take a peek over there, identify the A vector. The A bar vector, I should say. In the first case, it's 3, comma, negative 1, comma, 2. In the second case, it's... In the second three. case, it's... Negative 6, comma, negative 2, comma, 3. Negative... Three. Negative... Three. Negative... Three. negative Two times the first. What? One O. All right, I'll say it again. Cheapers. <laughs> Do you guys agree the direction vector is just three comma negative one comma two? Yes. Well, for the first line. For the second line, isn't the direction vector just uh, negative two times that one? Yeah. yeah. So you multiply two times the slope. That's not a yeah. Well, that's yeah. how I created the example out of thin air. Yes, that's exactly what I did. So I think bottom line, since this A bar over here is nothing more than this A bar times negative 2, clearly the two lines uh, go in the same direction. They're parallel. Oh, how about another question? Uh, even though they're parallel, do they intersect? I ask, even though they're parallel, do they intersect? No. <laughs> how do you know? Lines can't intersect if they're parallel. Sure they can. They can be on top of each other. <laughs> well, they have to yes, I count. So pick a point, like pick t up point. equals zero, and if like, a, like if x is equal to three, then um, then um, life's too difficult. <laughs> but watch me be really lazy. Notice if t is equal to zero. Clearly, I got the point negative two five, negative two five ten on one of the lines. But over here, when t is zero, I got seven five and ten. So what can you conclude? Yeah, they're not on top of each other. Therefore, they are parallel. In are you guys aware that lines in three space, they can either intersect, um, um, what were you guys told back in high school geometry? They intersect once, once or never or always. 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 <clears throat> it's just not true. It may be true in my XYZ coordinate system, but there are plenty of spaces for which lines can intersect at a finite number of points, but more than one. So well, yeah. If you, have, yeah. If you, if you were to have two. I was saying sine waves or cosine waves. But no, 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 straight lines. Oh, a straight line. Oh, straight whoever line, said yeah. lines have to be straight. Um, oh, <laughs> plant your feet right here in Rockland. Have a friend plant his or her feet in San Francisco, and you guys walk parallel. Walk in the same direction. Walk up. Walk north. Are your paths ever going to cross? Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many times? Twice. Mm -hmm. Twice. I got a lot of energy. How many? <laughs> Empty many times. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming that you lines, you want it that way. Because the space they're in is okay, but for a different reason. <laughs> true, true, true. So it's dependent on the, the space. On the yeah, it depends on what space you're living in. Uh, if you live in a non-Euclidean space, funky things like that can happen. If you live in a non-Euclidean space, the sum of the angles of a triangle may not be uh, 180 degrees. If you're living in a spherical space, like on a sphere, notice how the triangles that you draw have measured their angle more than 180 degrees. <laughs> or if you live in a hyperbolic space, it, is that really a triangle? Uh, yeah, 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 because, if it was because when you look at the tangent lines, they behave like that. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Jesus. Darn. So, Brad, yeah, I, I would consider those triangles. Okay, so you don't like it. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about this example, part two?
playing around with the numbers. That's part yes, I am. Watch me, watch me. Play ten divided by seven. <laughs> oh. Okay. Nobody? Three, four, two, zero, six, two, seven. Negative seven. Uh, how do you know? Very nice. You take their two direction vectors. Three, negative two, two. And in the other case, is it 6, 2, negative 7? 6, yeah. 2, negative 7? If you, take, if you consider the dot product, wouldn't that give you 18 minus 4 minus 14? Mm -hmm. I made an example of, so when you look at the dot product, oh, look at that. You get 0, which means the original two vectors are wrong. Right? Makes sense? <laughs> so we're looking at the slopes, but not the B, I guess, of, the, of each component, x, y, and z. I'm not sure I meant, I understand what you meant, I'm sorry. So you look at like the, like, I guess I would call it the slope of each component, so 6, 2. I, I can see where you're using the word slope. It's really because that's really guiding the direction of it, and it looks yeah. like y equals a, uh, mx plus b. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Determine if these two lines intersect. I, I mean, I know there are lines in three space that, that are, in a sense, meeting each other at a right angle, but they ever, they ever cross each other? Well, their directions are perpendicular. But they, do they cross each other? They could pass by each other, perhaps, but how do you determine that? Yeah, that's my question. How do you determine that? Wouldn't you use the cross product? But the cross product is merely going to tell me if the directions. If the directions are two vectors that are following, we've already established the answers. Yes. Cool. The, then maybe so they can be perpendicular, but not necessarily cross. Correct. Yeah. And, and the would... dot product will tell us that, that they're perpendicular, but then don't necessarily cross. Correct. So for them to meet, you have to have x, y, and z for all three be the same. So what if you were to set, if you set, them, you set them equal yeah. to each other and see if the set what equal to each other? The x components, y components, and z components, and then see when you solve it out if the if the statement is still true. All right. So you're saying we can find out when the x coordinates are the same, and I think the x coordinates. Of course, you have to do it for all three sets of coordinates, but yeah. Are the same when um, negative two plus three t. You guys, I made these up. I don't remember what they equals are. Equals seven plus six. T. Gotcha. So, so if I solve for t, do I get this? You guys, I did not mean for the solution to be this nice. <laughs> t equals negative 3. So they're the same when t equals negative 3. So for the other two, if they're the same when t equals negative 3. Beautiful. So now what equation am I going to solve? They are the yeah, I was solving no equation. Why not just plug that t value in and see what I get for the y or z coordinates for these two lines? Let's do the y coordinates. When I plug negative 3 in for t, Y is 11. But negative 3 is the key here. Y is? Negative 1. No, wait, that's wrong. 6, but uh, negative 1. <laughs> negative 1. Oh. Defer the study math, the worse you're going to be arithmetic, trust me. <laughs> and so the corresponding Y coordinates are not the same when the X coordinates are. That means these two lines, don't, don't they intersect. really never intersect. But they're, they're orthogonal in the sense that the direction vectors meet each other at right angles. Did you guys catch all that? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Tell me if I'm talking to you guys. Make it sense. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I'm still not getting why the first half of the equation is going matter. Ah, because I think, if you look at this picture, when it comes to the direction my line, is completely determined by this A vector. But if I label the A vector A, B, C, notice that those are the coefficients of T with these parametric equations. And since A, B, C determines this direction vector, the vector going in the same direction my line, then I think all I need to do is look at the coefficients for T, which are my A, B, and Cs in both these cases. That tells me everything about the direction. I think these numbers here, they simply constitute some point on the line, particularly when t is equal to zero. Are we talking about the black line? 
Yes, I am talking about the black line, but you got to confess, it's the green vector going in the direction of the black line. Yeah, I was looking at the red line. I got you. My apologies. I think that red bar in red is fundamentally important because I think this infinite collection of vectors that I refer to as R bar are literally spanning the entire line as T ranges over. So where does a line whose parametric equation is given below intersect the plane whose equation is given? You guys, I'm treating this all as new material. I'm just asking, can you relax, even as new? Can you just conjure up a technique for you to be able to answer the question? Plug everything in, I heard that. Yeah, And if I take this beast up of board and slap it in for X, I think I get this. This is just getting too annoying. Yeah. It's better than the bubbles. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's better than the bubbles. I agree. So here's my x value. Well, I shouldn't say value. Here's an expression representing x. Plus 2 times y, which is this. Plus 3 times z, which can be expressed as, as such. Oh, shoot, you guys. Look what I just did. I just transformed this question into a math e question. What equation? What unknown? Let's solve. Does that give me a total of Negative 17? No. Um, shoot. I can't do my head. Negative 3 plus 12. Positive 17. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. You guys just double check everything. You guys, everybody in harmony, are you happy? Yes. No, 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 because, because I heard that. I didn't answer the question. I haven't done anything wrong, but I think to answer the question, find out where the line does intersect the plane, I better find the corresponding plane. So you plane. gotta plug that t value plug back into the x, y, and z in the line. So I think I get the corresponding point. Jeepers, you really do make me do all the work. Is it 9 7? Maybe. <laughs> That is, uh, if I'm wrong, who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>